When looking at the state of the world today, we are faced with uncertainty and changes that seem to cause quite a bit of upheaval. From economic decline, natural disasters, animosity among nations, and drastic political shifts. Many search for answers that will provide hope and a promise of a brighter future. Yet those answers are never found within the world or from man. Psalms chapter 39 verse 7 tells us, And now, Lord Adonai, what wait I for? My hope is in thee. From Genesis to Revelation, the scriptures make it clear that we have a great hope, a hope that promises the restoration of the people of Yahweh, that in turn as well as restores all of creation. Yet our hope and restoration are always intricately connected to the restoration of the character and authority of Yahweh. In fact, it's when we are at our lowest, when the cares of this world, loss, and the pressures of life seem to have knocked the wind out of us, when we seem to have lost sight of the one who directs our steps, that in that moment and in that place, the promise of restoration and hope is truly understood. When feeling the furthest from the presence of the Creator, King David cried out in Psalms 51:12. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation, and uphold me with thy free spirit. This psalm was written on the heels of King David hearing the consequences of his own choices and sins as he had strayed from the path of righteousness, which would ultimately result in devastating personal loss. From this low place, he cries out for a restoration of his joy. Did you know that there is a difference between happiness and joy? Happiness is defined as an emotion that is temporary and short-lived, fleeting as it is based on one's circumstances. Happiness is only present when everything is going great and no pressures or cares hinder my emotions. David does not ask for happiness or for the trials to be removed as he understands his own choices have led him here. He instead boldly asks for the restoration of the joy of his salvation. You see, the principle of joy is long-lasting, going beyond mere emotions, and is not based on one's circumstances as it comes from within. True joy is experienced when one knows that adversity may come, storms may blow in, but there is a safe harbor in the midst of the storms that is found by those who understand and walk in joy. Joy is an overriding sense of power, enabling one to see beyond the moment to know that weeping may endure during the night, but joy indeed comes in the morning. It's a spiritual principle, a promise of overcoming despite opposition to all those who embrace the presence of Yah and dare to walk according to His word. To have one's joy restored infers that our vision and understanding is reset. Our hope and promise is not based on man, it is not based on what our current circumstances may look like, and it is not based on what may be happening in the world around us. Our hope is in Yahweh, and it is by the restoration of our salvation that we are able to have our mindsets changed and renewed. You see, when our joy is restored, it's about restoring the source of our hope by restoring the authority and the place of Yahweh in our lives. When I understand that the personal struggles I may be enduring in this moment are merely stepping stones to bringing me closer to the source of my hope, to deepen my faith and strengthen my walk, and perhaps to even realign my steps, I have now produced the fruit of the Spirit called joy that cannot be manifested in any other setting, and it unleashes the principle of restoration in my life. It is the process of reconciling, renewing, repairing, rebuilding, returning, and restitution. The word salvation used here in Psalms is Yesha. It is from the same root that stems the name of the manifestation of our salvation, the Messiah Yeshua. Yesha infers to be unrestricted and thus to be free. It is deliverance in the sense of a movement from distress to safety, from a place of restriction and paralysis to a spacious place and generally must come from an outside source other than the one that's being oppressed. In other words, much like David understood, we cannot save ourselves 
Our hope does not come from man or our own abilities. I can't fix what is broken, but I can cry out to the one who is able. Our hope is in Yahweh, and as we cry out for the restoration of the joy of his salvation, Yeshua, we acknowledge that he alone is able to deliver. We restore his authority and place in our lives, and in turn we find rest, and yes, even joy, regardless of our circumstances. Thank you for joining us as we continue to walk down the paths of restoration.